Hello and thanks for joining the Thursday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. Today on the program, Senator Akpabio pulls out of Akwaibom not a senatorial run, urges APC to send replacements to INEC. Four months after Nigerians expressed worry over army's refusal to prosecute four killer soldiers indicted over Taraba killings. And later on the show, NMA president says Nigeria needs 25 years to bridge the shortage of doctors. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Utitoju and Mayo Akikbelu. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. I have this invite from uh, Basharundele Momodu for the Ovation Red Carol. I just have 10 for our viewers. So if you're lucky enough, first come on the first come first uh, business, Babajide, to attend this carol at the Eco Hotel and Suites. And um, I think the first three callers here okay. today, we can just give them the okay. opportunity. The first so three callers who are based in Lagos, who are based in Lagos, can get a chance. To okay, to attend this carol on Sunday. So That's uh, the 2019 Ovation, Ovation Carol from um, Chief Dele Momodu. Now, a battle-tested warrior is reputed to know when to go or when not to go for a fight. Nigeria's Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Gotul Akpabio, has just exhibited that trait. He has pulled out of the Akwaibom not a senatorial run against Senator Chris Akpayong of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. In a letter to the National Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Senator Akpabio attributed his withdrawal from the rerun to the possibility, responsibility, his position as a Minister of Niger Delta Affairs has placed on him. The minister said he cannot abandon such critical assignments in pursuit of a rerun, asking the party to find a replacement. This was the position canvassed by Babajide on two episodes of the program. Let's share the position with you. Aquabio has a mountain to climb. The margin is 38,000. I do not see Akwabio surmounting that. I do not even see him contesting because he is a minister at this time. To contest, he must first resign. Resign. He must first resign. He is already a minister. He cannot be contesting when he's a minister. Henneken Lopobri resigned to go and take part in, uh, in the electoral process in, in, uh, in, Bayesa. in Bayesa. Now he has to resign. What? Will he do? Will he now resign and lose all that uh, he has gained within the short time that he became minister? He has had the NDDC merge with his ministry. His clout is bigger. Will he now leave all of that to go and contest? Uncertainty. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We are, are very certain that I cannot <laughs> win. Cannot I swimming. predicted at that time that I will not win. So <laughs> if I were at Pabio, I would sit where I am in Abuja and continue with my work as Minister of Niger Data and forget about an election that I will not win because I'm certain that I will not win if they do a fresh election. Mm. So the odds are against Akwabio from what um, uh, Babajide is saying. Uh, do you see a scenario where Akwabio will resign his position, leave certainty for uncertainty? I don't see that. I don't see that. Because, so what happens? Uh, for all practical purposes, I, I, I don't think uh, Akpabio, uh, given uh, you know the chances that you know weigh heavily against him, will want to you know forego his ministerial portfolio and you know contest the contest the elections. Um, yeah, I expect him to be wise, you know, to know what to do. Otherwise, you go after two things and you lose you lose you lose everything. It is in Akpabio's interest to not contest because he will be humiliated. Mm. He cannot win the election. He cannot surmount the 38,000 gap that this person has. Now, in the whole state, once they know that there is this election that is coming, the state will mobilize resources. They will go to SNUDIM. The governor will mobilize people, go to SNUDIM. They will go and face that election squarely with all the might that they've got. And if I were him, I would just stay where I am. I've been made a minister. My job, my ministry has been expanded with the 
uh, with the coming Major, of uh, Major Niger Delta, I mean the NNDC, mm -hmm. with the merger of the NDC. 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 Yeah. And, uh, so I will stay where I am. I will not go and risk humiliation in the hands of uh, uh, these people because 19,000 on during the general election. If you if you were able to get 19,000 persons out during general election, off season election, the match, the turnout is usually low. So he needs he needs like hundred. <laughs> he may you know he needs thirty eight <laughs> from the calculation now. <laughs> he needs and you know Akwabio's popularity because of the election he lost may have gone down. There is no yeah. doubt about that. This is one of the greatest assets we have on this show, our ability to forecast what is going to happen. And lo and behold, Senator Gostul Akpabio has actually written to the all-progressive uh, Congress that I want out of that contest. Jide, we said it, you said it, and we knew this was what, how it's going to end. Yes, because we had to resign. Remember... Many people are arguing that Carl defy me didn't resign, but he went into a primary election. Mm. The primary election is different from, from the, the main, main election. election. The main election, the INEC will, will guarantee that you will resign before you contest, because that's what the law says. That's what Chevron went to go and test. Yes, mm, you know. So that was a primary mm. election. Whether primary or... So he main. knew, he sat back, because you see, a Pablo... Um, is just someone overtaken by his ego. He's not as popular as he thinks he is. I've been saying this thing since early this year, that he will not win the senatorial election. He went, he was campaigning, the president uh, and, and other people, they were in that state, and he said everybody in Akwaibo had become APC. And I told myself that, why would a man lie publicly like this? You know? Just so that people would think that, oh, he has conquered the whole state. At the end of the day, he went into that contest. 19,455 um, people accredited in that local government. But Akpabio was looking for a way to bring in more than 61,000 votes, claiming that they shot the 61,000 votes out. Of course... To swing it from one local government. One local government. Whereas the man who defeated him, who led him with 38,000 votes? That man, the 38,000 margin, is from nine local governments. <laughs> you, you want to bring 61,000 from nine <laughs> wards, um, from 11 wards. <laughs> Just one local government. 11 wards, 61,000. In the whole of Akwaibom, in the whole of Akwaibom, including the, the, re, the urban centers, mm. Uyo, the big towns, there's no way anybody got that kind of vote. <laughs> well, the whole world knows that ACN Udim is not an urban center. It's not even semi-urban. It's a provincial part of the state. See, if the INEC wants to really do a good job in our country, and I've said it before, they need to take a look at the voters' register because a lot of what you find there Sex job figures, sex job manipulations already done to enable that's why the number win. of PVC is quite different from the number yeah. of registered. You will not see okay now. We are is, is claiming that okay, because it's that that is 1000. The whole of the reg the people are credited to vote on that day were ni just 19,000. And in that state, in that uh, local government, I neck record shows that there are more than 100,000 registered. While lie, there is no way that they can bring. If you subject this thing to electronic, uh, um, uh, what is it called, uh, accreditation, there is no way they will find even up to fifty thousand to come and vote. Mayor. So this is the thing. This is the bigger picture that I'm looking at. Hmm. Hmm. Mayor, looking at the political aspect of it, if Akpabio goes into this contest as a senator representing. Um, Akwaibom, Northeast Senatorial District, and to the position he is right now, and from what we've gathered, his kind of power, the power he wields in this cabinet vis a vis the ministry's handling, I think he took a wise decision. Yes, of course, because um, um, he went into APC, principally because he thought 
he will be able to win and become the Senate president. But um, Senate president. Yes, that, that was one thing. That was the to to the, Yeah, he uh, thought it would be zone to the south south, and he could become the Senate president. You know, he was majority leader when he was in PDP. But you see, part of the problem is that some some of the some of the leaders that we think are very popular, some of the things that work for them is the kind of party, the influence of the party they are in in that particular area. Akwa Ibom is a PDP state. Hmm. So immediately you step out, in, when, when, when he's in PDP, if, for example, he stayed in PDP and he contested the election, he would have won. Hmm. In Akwa Ibom, yes, he would have won. But Akwa Ibom is a PDP state. So when you step out and you go to another party, then you realize that it is not your influence hmm. or your popularity that was making you to win an election. Hmm. It's just because it is that it is basically it is yes this is a basically a but there's some there's some there's some parties that that are very strong in some particular states so you can only win election if you belong to that particular family mm. so when he now took that gamble and realized that he um, could not become what he wanted he was lucky enough to get a very good ministry so it won't make sense for him to throw that ministry away and go back to just ex-governor. Uh, Fabio is too egoistic to, to allow that to happen. So it was obvious that he would not contest, because he knew he wouldn't win. Looking at the history between him and uh, this, uh, the man is running with that um, Senator Ekpenyo, and the relationship with, uh, you know, with the governor, he actually put there, because you know, we've, dis we've, al we've always been discussing this on the, this show, as in the relationship between the, uh, the godfather and the successor. So, Akwabio and what happened between Akwabio and Udom Umanuel falls into that category. And you uh, predicted it earlier too that Udom Umanuel would deploy all the Asla as you predicted Kogi states that if that election in Kogi um, East, mm. if is Kogi, Kogi West, if it's conducted that the governor will do everything not to return, um, not to make sure that Dino Milayo does not return. Yes. The same thing you are saying about Udom Manuel. That's the, that's that's what the governor will do, and I said it. Although I didn't officially predict three days to the election, but I said it earlier that Yabelo will not let um, uh, Dino um, win the election. Whatever Dino does, Yabelo will not allow. And I use the word the system will not let him go back to the Senate. But some of our friends, you, in fact, you have more friends among them than me. They now <laughs> said, they now said <laughs> because, <laughs> because I said, th those ones that I said like a month earlier. So if dynamics are changing in politics, I should still stick to the same prediction. No. You can see the illogic of some of our friends. Hmm. The illogic baffles me that you must stick to. You are seeing people moving. Faleke going to help. Tinobu going to help this one, that mm. one. Like and I should still insist <laughs> that, okay, it's what I said three months earlier that, that will prevail. <laughs> Nobody predicts like that. Nobody thinks like that. So this is the thing. The Apabio thing, that party is, since 1999, they've never lost that state. Mm. And it's not as if that, it's not, and it's not like Bayesa, where militants easily take over and overrun an election, especially in the riverine areas. No. It doesn't happen in their state. It's just like Cross River. It's like everybody knows that, okay, this is our party. This is where we are. If you win the primary election of APC in Bono State, you know that you've won the election. Go to bed. I once told you about the speaker of Bono, of Bono State House of Assembly. Mm. People refused to contest against him because they knew that they would just waste their deposit. So this is the thing. There are some parties like that in some states. We've seen the governor leave a party. He was sitting governor. He left a party. Mahmouda Shinkafi left uh, AMPP to go and join the PDP. And he was not re-elected in Zamfara State. So this is the thing. If you step out of the family, because everyone, including the people who are very strong, I always say that the strongest politician in Akwaibom today is Senator Albert. So... Those are the people who determine what happens, who wins what. So once you step out of the family, you are like fish out of water. Probably thought he could swing it alone. No, he could not. 
Before the election, you go back and watch those. I said, I said they will not win this senatorial election. You see, sometimes when you say this, the people will think you are a fool. What is the truth? Because you put one or two things together and, and convince yourself that this is how this election is likely to go. There are some things about the way we do elections in Nigeria that are very predictable, that have not changed. That have not changed. And at the end of the day, it, uh, the, the outcome of elections are determined by individuals, what they do before the election and what they do on election day. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing. Now he's writing to his party that they should substitute, that they should substitute. APC cannot substitute. Of course. And Pablo cannot. should know better. Really? You can't of substitute. Course they can't. At this stage, and Pablo's name will be on that ballot. Whatever vote people give him is wasted. Because the period but for substitution is over. But his letter he was citing some section. Which section? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let I us think, wait. I think Let's was, wait till that time. I think it was you. I think the, the base. It's, yeah. You see, it, it's not dead now. There mm -hmm. are, you see, you can, if you win a primary election, you can choose to not contest. But you have to write to your party. Your party will not Notify your party that, look, I don't want to uh, be part of this election. Then INEC must get, INEC must get 45 days notice. For the election. This is an election mandated by the court. It is not a normal election. It's not a regular election. And it's within 90 days that the court expects you to. Okay. Okay. Remember, since when the court gave the judgment, hmm. time is not even on their side. You with all these options. I'm telling you that his um, substitution is not bad yes, by law. I think why it's not bad I by think, law. I think, I think why he decided, why, why, why they... Effectively, no, he why they, have why they forwarded, why they, why, they, why, they, why they are using that argument mm. is because of a subsisting judgment in the case of Amechi by the Supreme Court that says that people vote for party, that the people, that the candidates are representing parties. Mm. So it is parties that people voted for. That's what the Supreme Court said. That was why Amechi became governor without his name being on the ballot. Okay. So he then, you know, it, so his own argument is that it is the party. I'm not in the test of the party. But why he cannot do that now? Why I think, I'm not a lawyer, but why I think that will not work is because one, it's a rerun. Yes, in Kogi, if you remember, in Kogi, um, the present governor was brought in in a rerun and he became a governor. But because, but the problem of that one is that the subsisting governor, the the, or, the person who, or the person who contested died. Uh -huh. But Pablo is not dead. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The person died and there's a need for him to be replaced. But the problem with Pablo now is that the election, this is not, this is a rerun ordered by a court. You understand? So the other election, the election that was held the previous time is subsisting. So technically, so technically, EDP, that technically, Senator has won that 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 seat with or without technically, that election. technically, yes. Do you, do you agree with this? If mm -hmm. that technically, if Akwabio does not contest, PDP will just go in. As yeah, in that no. they, they don't do for PDP. APC is not the only party on the ballot. Now you know our system. Uh -huh. They are not the only party on the ballot. Election will take place with Akwabio's yeah. name. There, yeah. With a Pablo's name on that ballot, but any vote that goes to him is going to be wasted. And I let people wait for me to see whether what I'm saying is rubbish, because this is what will happen. Whatever you see, it is the time. There is no time. Uh, is APC when he was saying that APC should bring? A, do they have candidates in reserve? Do they have candidates in reserve? Yeah. Is that a place where they kept candidates? Because that, that means they have them? to do primaries. The time for, for yes. the window for primaries is, yes. is gone. It's gone. The window for primaries is gone. So technically, okay. I have our first caller. Victor, Hello. thank you for calling us. Victor from Lagos. Yes, good evening. I have been yes, you just won yourself um, an invite for the Elevation yeah, Red Caro that um, on Sunday at the Eco Hotel. So, ah, wonderful. Wow. Yes, you get in touch with us. You have you have this. Okay, okay. Go okay. ahead with your contribution. Yes, I think uh, Senator Apanio did uh, the honorable thing in that uh, uh, he knew uh, the team is off and uh, so he would, uh, his experience 
meeting with former governor of the state. We knew if we go into that contest again on this rerun, we going to lose the election. Because uh, having put in a uh, best performance the last time, which uh, was not good enough, he was lucky enough for the court to have ordered, uh, you know, and like uh, Baba Didi and Mayor said, uh, the entire territorial district, the vote is not uh, up to what uh, he is ambassador and uh, promising his party. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not fair and square, but uh, I think uh, he is lucky because uh, the court ordered him on, and he has done the honorable thing by putting that forth. What I'm not too sure is that if uh, I make an actually accept his uh, pulling out by uh, allowing his party to actually replace him with another candidate. Because since it's the run, you know, I'm not a special election. Mm -hmm. All so right, thank you. Assistant. Thank you for your contribution, Victor. If you remember, uh, um, you know that when the SDP people had their crisis and they said, oh, that we will not have a candidate. What did the INEC say? INEC but said no. Donald Duke. Yeah. Donald Duke will be on the ballot. It's yeah. too late for you to change. The same thing, OBS Yes. She the was, name she will still be, still still be Apabio's name will still be there. Yeah. People will vote for him. I'm sure he will get some votes. <laughs> but those votes will, will, will be wasted <laughs> at the end of the day. Still to come, four months after, Nigerians express worry over Ahmed's refusal to prosecute four killer soldiers indicted over Taraba killings. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. This is Journalist Bangal. We're reaching you live from Television Continental here in Lagos, Nigeria. After the hues and cries that greeted the gruesome murder of three policemen from the Intelligence Response Team, IRT, of the Nigerian Police Force by some soldiers in Taraba State on the 6th of August, there's an easy calm regarding the tragedy. Four months after the killing of the three policemen and two civilians, the military authorities are yet to court martial the suspects. The latest has also not been heard about the king kidnapping pin that the police were conveying from Ibi town before he met their deaths. Hamisu Bala, popularly known as Wadume. Even after a pro panel had sat and submitted its report, are we witnessing the greatest cover up of all time? Babajide, what is happening? Friends in the army who can tell us what is happening. But I told the chief of army staff that we will not keep quiet. If we do this program and, not, and we wait again, they refuse to bring that uh, the, uh, the army captain. We will do another one. We will continue to talk about this until justice is served. Amongst the people killed, it could have been anyone. It could have been anybody. Fathers, and these are Nigerian heroes. Families. They were doing their job. This wadume of a man collected 125 million from a businessman. He collected the BVN number of the businessman and emptied the account. Notorious, notorious kidnapper in a state that is already now very notorious for, 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 for uh, incidents of kidnapping. And they were trying to solve that problem. You then wasted them. We knew this story, we knew was at fault. We said from the beginning that yes, this is the way this thing, uh, that this is how this thing happened. And the, the, the testimony or the confession of Wadume was in line with what we had said. The police have locked up Wadume. Their own officers who are believed to be working in cahoots with uh, Captain Balabe, they've locked them up. You know he wanted uh, one of those policemen to pro to produce the key to the mm, handcuff. handcuff. Uh -huh. That one said, "Ah, I'm I'm on vacation on this and that." But he tried to help. The police have locked them up. What have uh, what has the army done? They need to tell us. They need to show respect to Nigerians. What have you done? Because when we had this program the other day, they said, oh, did they, what usually happens is, look, we'll, we'll set up a court martial, uh, this and that. We've seen you set up court martials in the past, but we've not seen anyone where time was wasted like this. You get the point that I'm making? Even, even during the military regime, we've seen army set up court martials to try people accused of coup plotting. It doesn't take this long. The man, the, the, 
so the soldier who was guilty of aberrant behavior in Odo State who raped the Akumba Students. student. Did it take this long before they served justice to him? Mm. The one who killed the uh, 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 Marwa Rider in, 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 in Abia State, did it take this long before the army court martialed him and handed him over to the police? Mm. Oh, so is it because the blood of policemen were involved in this one? That's why we should now behave like nothing has happened and you think Nigerians will forget? Nigerians are harassing me on Facebook that this matter, they want to see how it will end. And I've praised the chief of army staff for discipline. That when it comes to discipline, he, he enforces discipline. Right from when he just became chief of army staff, I remember Nigerian soldiers in, 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 in Yobe State, in Gaydam, they were confronted by Boko Haram. And they left their duty post, they fled. Burate now said, the next time this happens, because you have the weapons to deal with the enemy, the next time that this happens, you will be severely dealt with. It was in the army, I'm not inventing a story, it was in the army magazine, soldier, that I read that the chief of army staff was warning his troops that the next time you run away from the enemy, you will be severely dealt with. It was the former army spokesman, uh, our friend uh, SK, Usman, that edited that uh, write-up. So I'm saying the truth. But today, what have we seen? If the army knows that, okay, this matter is an emotive matter, we don't know how to let there be a meeting between the chief of army staff and the chief of, I mean, and the IG, and let it be, let the army Apologize for what has happened. That look in the course of duty, in the line of duty, this happened, so that the shitty press statement that uh, the army spokesman wrote back then, all of that will be forgotten. Because one of the reasons it pains people is the kind of uh, uh, press statement that Sagir issued. So we can't take Nigerians for granted. Nigerians are watching; they know that this matter. That some people are trying to sweep this matter under the carpet and they want action they want to hear hmm. they want to hear something mayor when the uh, defense headquarters when they set up their panel asked for extension for two weeks when the reports now came out eventually everything was watered down the language that was used and everything the way they were dancing around it nobody was clearly clearly indicted in that report since that time we said it on this program that there's like an attempt by the defense headquarters to play like Esprit de Corps. I think the I think it has to it has to do that's part of the problem of our security architecture. One, there is there is not discipline that's supposed to let us have a good fighting unit. When you look at Nigerian army, they lack discipline. In terms of how they face the enemy, in terms of how the 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 chiefs take care of the troops. In, in how they react to each other, how they react to sister agencies. Because, and uh, above all, is the impunity of it. When anybody is guilty of collusion and murder, we should not even wait for them to do the needful. Not to talk of the fact, then when you now had the fact that the people that were killed were officers of state, they were doing legitimate duty, risking their lives to protect the Nigerian state. And then one corrupt army officer in collusion with a kidnapper, with a known kidnapper, went outside the orbit of, ambit of the law to do what is obviously illegal. And the army, as an institution, believes that they don't hold any explanation. It shows the kind of impunity that, that causes the problem of our, of, of our security situation in Nigeria. I, like like Jude said, those people who are involved must be brought to account. The kidnapper, the army captain, and his officers who officer. killed those people, mm -hmm. they must be brought to account. Because you cannot, it is bad enough that you've killed people. Those who were killed were officers of state who were on official duty to solve problem of kidnapping in Nigeria. We, we must not allow that to, and it shows the kind of contempt that the army 
protect the police. They don't have respect for the Jam police. And that's the part of the problem that we have, especially in the Northeast region, where you need a symbiotic relationship between the police and the army. It's obvious that there is no, there is no cooperation between no the sister agents. Yeah, there's no synergy to be able to fight the security challenges that we have in the Northeast. Because if you can kill some police officers who are on official police duties, and you think and you issue the press release insulting yes, them. Yes, insulting them. Insulting it shows, their memory. It, it, mm -hmm. it shows it shows it shows the problem that we have concerning our security. Jude, if you look at the press release from the two press releases I read from Frank Omba, stating the fact and everything, mm -hmm. you will know that the police high command were actually pained mm -hmm. about what happened. Yeah. But because of this not to rock the boats, they too they would have warned them to keep quiet. The IRT guys, I'm sure they are watching us. They know that look, so injustice has been meted out on these guys, and people are demanding for justice, and that is exactly what we're doing here. No, that's just they, they are. Everyone is waiting. They are waiting, and they must have felt that justice will be served. So, everyone they calm down. The worst thing that can happen to us, colleagues, the worst thing minds, that can happen to us is minds. to have the most the most effective and the best trained unit within the police, police yeah. demoralized yeah. as a result of this kind of action. Mm. That is what I'm worried about. Mm. Because when these things happen, they are the ones who go to fish out the kidnappers. Across the country. And then you have some of the best that they had. This kind of fate befell them. If Abakari would have been part of that. Yes, they would have done the same thing. Have, they yes, 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 yes. They would have killed him. Yes. Yeah, because they were told that they were, they, mm. the people were uh, kidnappers. <laughs> you know? The yeah. guy raised a lot that they were kidnappers. So the, the thing is, I know it's a bit difficult for them. I know. It's a bit difficult for them. But if at the beginning, the IG was called by the chief of army staff said, my friend, this is what happened. This is regrettable. And there was a press call, a joint press conference. We won't be talking about this. Our people must use wisdom. If they had had a joint press conference, they'll say, oh, this is a sad day. Well, you know, these things happen. We are going to bring f people to no, justice. We are going to investigate this and that. people. Let me tell you, tension will have gone down. With the IG sitting beside the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the chief of army staff. Uh, staff, both of them showing that they are on the same page, but that this was an avoidable uh, calamity, this and that. But you have a situation in which they are, the people they left behind, the members of their families, they are still grieving. Mm. They can't be happy when they know that justice has not been served. But even mm. to add to that, huh? this is even slightly different from what you're saying because when you look at it, if there is, if if yes, it, 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 it is sometimes that is friendly fire. Mm and you can lose people to friendly fire. It happens all over the world. But in this case, it's not friendly fire. Yes, I know. This was I said immediately it happened. This, this, was, this was a deliberate, deliberate murder. Yes. Some people just felt, those people because they have, because in court with a kidnapper, who apparently must have, must have, must have, must have compromised them. Compromised compromised them. them. You know, they know that this guy is a kidnapper. They know. And then they uh, were they were able to was they not the that one the guy who, was arrested he, he, and they killed those people because when you look at that, he was not even look they for, knew who those guys were. Yeah, he was even the one who, uh, who went to get him, someone who helped him to court. Yes, yeah. so went to go and look for the weather. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah, one yes. is not even friendly uh, fire. This is so the boy said it now. Yes, that he took him. Yeah, this is a crime. It's a crime. So whether they are members of the military or not, does he have a key? What we even expected was that okay, this thing has happened. Instead of the the the. Uh, piece of verbiage, the terrible statement, trying to ridicule those people in debt and all that, the, ten, the tension will have calmed down mm. by simply admitting that, yes, this has happened, we are investigating. Mm. And I know, so everyone will know that the police and the army, they are on the same side. Mm. Then the, that tension will not extend to the rest of us as mm. Nigerian people. Mm. You know? But you didn't mm. do that. You wanted to make it look like those guys, they didn't introduce themselves properly, this and that. And we've not discovered that even that one is not true. And, if, and I think that part of the problem, I think... What is your duty to go and be inviting someone to help a kidnapper to court his... Uh, you have been heavily compromised. Yeah, you, go, you call the police mother and say, no, mm -hmm. I'm not... Uh, I don't have the uh, key. This thing, I don't. Mm -hmm. You then call the weather. Yeah, the so that, that you tell you that, that this is a, a very bad case. Very bad case. I think... Okay, I have Azan from Lagos. Azan, you're a winner. 
to the ovation. Carol, a wonderful job. Uh, yeah. How do, uh, see, uh, how do you expect kidnapping to stop when oh. there is security corner to it? Oh. It's something all of us should ponder over. Oh, Asan. You see, this connection you are seeing of army, you understand, before there was a connection of police, now you are seeing army. Oh. People that were paid to protect you, now connecting with your killer. How do you expect it to end? To end? Oh. Oh. I was on the expressway between Kaduna and Abuja. Up to Kaduna, I, I did not see any SUV. All the cars I saw on the road are rickety cars. Oh, oh. Everybody was all the rich men have run away from the road. Go by rail yeah, from going Kaduna on the road. to Abuja. <laughs> and this is the road to the seat of power. So. There's a problem within the system. There's to reject the system. There's a systemic failure. We uh -huh. must sit up and see what happened to this. This is a little more step for Nigerian army to mm. bring out that guy, mm. show by example. So that there will be peace in this country. Thank yeah. you very much. Asa, thank you for that lovely contribution. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, what, what I was saying, well, I, I I think part of the problem, I, I'm, I'm in the wrong, but what I, well, I think one of the problems are the army. The army does not want to give a situation to the troops. You understand? That um, there was issue with policemen and they handed over an officer to the police. But they'll be handing over. That's what I'm saying. Maybe that's what I said because it's you no know, because it's because of the fighting units within that group. No, I but think this the one is they, different. You know the way they, in my view, and I may be wrong, because Brate may just surprise me tomorrow and go and hand over that uh, 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 policeman. Uh, brigade commander. In my view, you know this has been a very emotive issue, argument here and there. Once you hand over, you have admitted guilt. guilt. I think. When you look at the press statement, you look at even the report by the, the defense uh, headquarters, there is an attempt to stay in the middle, to not admit that one Most, side is guilty. Yes. So maybe that's what they just want to continue. That if we hand this guy over, then it means that we have admitted guilt. Hmm. But do the court martial. Let's, let's get the result. Hmm. Look at the result. Uh, let's get, just get the result. But they know that invariably the guy has to be handed over. That is what the law says. And you've handed over people in the past. Well, so this guy does not have two heads. Well, Go ahead, uh, put him on trial, and hand him over. Otherwise, we'll continue to talk about it. Now, and as, as Ant said, earlier this week, we discussed about the effrontery of kidnappers right now as in the way that they go about executing the, uh, 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 the, this particular crime. It's not taking a kind of alarming um, uh, um, yeah, 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 direction. See, because part of the problem is that the regular police have shown over time that they don't have the capability or the willingness to solve that problem. It is the I intelligence even police, police officers. officers. Yes, <laughs> it is the intelligence response team that are being in the forefront mm. of fighting kidnapping or major crimes within the police. It is because it's because it's, it's, it's an elite unit within the police, well trained with the best people, and that is why. The Nigerian army and even the government should look at it properly because, like Jina said the other time, if we allow another act of omission of commission to allow the intelligence response team to believe that it is not worth losing their lives or doing their job the way they are doing it now, it's then we are in trouble. in trouble. We are in serious in trouble. trouble because the Nigerian That's police well. have shown that they don't have the capacity, capacity yeah. and the willingness and to solve that problem. Yeah. So it is the intelligent response that is the only thing within the army that is a cube and trained enough to do this. Mm -hmm. So if you now kill three of their men in the course of duty and, and you and think they don't you get can, justice. and they don't get justice, then we are in trouble. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, with one doctor to 22,000 patients, just look at that statistic. Ratio in Nigeria, the country is probably in for a big burden. Worse still, respite far from sites. The national president of the Nigerian Medical Association, NME, Francis Fadouille, has let it be known that it would take the country 25 years to reduce an adequate number of doctors to cater for its population. He said, with about 3,000 medical doctors being produced yearly in Nigeria, 3,000, there, there exists a huge deficit in the country's health sector 
and the situation is worsening by the brain drain syndrome. Babajide, if you go to UK, you go to America, you go to Saudi Arabia, our doctors are the one holding their health sector. And continually, South Africa. continually, if you speak with a private doctor now, my hospital, my private thinking hospital, of going. thinking of going, taking a professional exam mm -hmm. to convert some going to Australia to get money to pay their professional exam, and they go with their families. Yeah, that is. Uh, but the the problem is not simply that they are leaving. That we, we, the we problem don't is that enough. we don't have enough medical colleges to produce. Twenty. To, you, you see, to to achieve the desirable ratio, hmm. we need two hundred and seventy thousand doctors. We have just thirty medical colleges in Nigeria. Yes, India has four hundred and sixty medical colleges. Damn. You can see that we have not started. 460 medical colleges for India, 30 for us. Now, even if these medical colleges produce 200 doctors every year, which is not possible, mm. if they produce 200 um, doctors every year, that will only give us about 6,000 or so. It's still a far cry. We will need about 50 years. 50 years. To bridge the gap. Yes. That is the thing. When the man said 25 years, he was just being conservative. Honestly, we need about 50 years. When you look at the number of medical colleges that we have, assuming that they don't even leave, that is assuming that they don't, don't leave. leave, we are turning them out. The number, Nigeria has the lowest doctor, doctor patient ratio in mm. the world. We have the lowest in the world. And a lot of people will say, oh, there are doctors, this and that. Well, when you go to the rural areas, healthcare true. is even non-existent. Zero. I was telling you about um, uh, some parts of Adama State where people go to Cameroon to receive Medicare. Because you just don't have, you don't have hospitals in those places. Yeah. Now, in, yeah. the, in the midst of that, pe these people are living. The best are living. The not so good Thank themselves you. are even living. Hmm. So who will be who, who, who will stay here and do and, and, and get the job done? Ratio. <laughs> let me let me, let me look at the problem. Let me, look, let me look at the problem from another angle. One, I think one, we don't seem we, we the state is not investing enough money on education. The budget for education is very low. So we we don't have enough colleges, like you said, because the state is not spending enough money on education. That's one. Two we are not the doctors that we even have we are not giving them the right remuneration you know if you it, it, before now it, it's so prestigious to be a doctor and a lawyer in fact most families believe that because the lawyers at that time were the one that was in forefront of fighting for independence and all that so law was a very noble profession a very prestigious profession but the doctors uh, medicine used to be number one and for you to be a doctor, you spend more years in university mm. than most courses. And then when you now come out, you realize that we are in a country where we, we, pay, we pay legislators far more than doctors. Yeah. Because we don't, we don't value what they do, so we frustrate them and allow them to go elsewhere. It is reverse you, the case, yes, reverse is the case yes. in America. In, in America, that's the, high, that the medical, highest speed. When you're in the medical profession, the you are made. The Even just to be a nurse, yeah. you will be doing very well. In a lot of countries, they are because people value what they do. But in Nigeria, just like most things, we don't, we don't, have, we don't do most things, or we don't take the right decisions most times. Mm -hmm. we, we have wrong values. And those that we are supposed to to develop, those who, who, who the teachers, the doctors, we neglect them and pay those who do not really have, who do not have much value to the system. You know, this will no doubt affect mortality rates. As of in, course. Of <laughs> course. Because people prefer to go to one roadside um, to, uh, to go and drink um, uh, and things that will complicate the, the situation. I'm sure some people now this year they've not visited doctor. They say they will tell you that look, there's nothing wrong with me. You see, what we don't want to see 
is a situation in which a significant proportion of our population um, does not have access to Medicare. And this is what happens when you don't have enough doctors, especially in the rural areas. People travel so many kilometers in some cases. Uh, you know, pregnant women, mm. nursing mothers, mm. they travel just to be able to access Medicare. Mm. Where you have enough health facilities with the doctors to man those health facilities, this will not happen. People don't, don't need, and because in some of those cases, on their way to hospital, complications happen and they die. Mm. So we have not reached that level that you can safely say, yes, our health sector is uh, uh, approaching a uh, kind of uh, optimal level of uh, uh, efficiency. No, we just have to continue to invest in that area, devote much more money than we, than, uh, we devote to it uh, via our budget. We, 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 we need to also spend more money, build more medical colleges. Let's have more medical colleges where we can churn out enough doctors, you know, to take care of our population. Because, as I said, you must, even if you do 200, uh, each of those schools produce 200 doctors a year, which is not practicable, okay. we will still not have enough. I have Jakub from Lagos. Thank you for joining us, Jakub. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Yeah, good evening. 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 Yeah. Uh, Baba Jide, I really love uh, your contribution and the other co-hosts in the studio. Yeah. You see, I could have lost to talk about the last party, but here we are talking about doctors here. Baba Jide, you said something like that, that in the Luna area. Baba Jide, I would like you to send your reporter. So even the general system here in Lepo, mm. in Okyoto here, it is their dear, Baba Jide, to receive care for people. So they extend that. They are recalling people that have accidents. You know, there were no places for them to be attended to. And then sometimes, because of the overload, overwork, the way the doctor will yes. talk to you as a patient, you, you will rather right. see like, right. them yeah. to go back home yeah. sure, yeah. because mm. they are overworked. They are overworking them. They are overworking them. Thank you, You have. You know, many of the doctors. That's the last person. If you will go, many of the doctors are in the urban centers, in the rural areas. A lot of our people live in the rural areas. In the rural areas, where people are needed, where these avoidable deaths from diseases that naturally shouldn't be killing our people, we don't have doctors there. We don't even have enough health facilities in those areas. So you'll find that it is down here. Everybody has, uh, has come to the yes. urban centers. But even at that, those hospitals can't cope. We we'll go to Bagana with General Hospital. With the people, with the General number Hospital, of people going there, the they can't Hospital. cope. The pressure on the doctors. Yes, they can't cope. They just but can't cope. That's the point I'm making. Because we are supposed to anchor our, our health on, on, on health centers in the rural area. Yes. They are we the have ones that are supposed yes, that uh, primary health care center, centers, secondary ones. health center, yes. mm -hmm. and tertiary health center. But us, yes. we just modeled everything up. So those are the ones that are supposed to take care of the people. You'll be able to have doctors who can take care of immediate, their immediate needs. Then when they cannot solve that problem, they would have do referrals. But what we have is that we don't even have health centers. Our governments uh -huh. should so know primary that. primary centers yeah. are not no, in Yes, yeah. yeah. our governments should have in every, in every locality that should be primary health centers. Mm -hmm. Who can take care Look of the whole of Ojo Ojo is just one there. Oh, the whole of Ojo Ojo, there's just one. That one that after Falefe's house. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's just mm -hmm. that small health center. That's the one that services that area. But even, even that one, what of what I'm sure it's what not well equipped. You have to look at it. Even if it's a group, it's such a small place. So they you can't cope with the population. That's the point I'm making. You know, this is like malaria and all that. They should be handled at primary, those primary uh, health, health centers. centers. But you still find a lot of people with uh, malaria going to take general them to hospital. general hospital and going all that. No. to last week. Yeah. But the thing is, in my view, since we can't solve this problem immediately, what we can do, we can look for, we can make, take remedial steps. The remedial steps will mean that some categories of health workers can be trained to help fill some gaps. They may not be involved in surgery or at least, but 
there are some uh, more nurses to be brought in. No, not just nurses. Even people who are not nurses, some health workers, they can bring them in and get them to do On some of training. what some of what doctors do. Okay. But they don't. It doesn't have to get to the point of oh, being doing surgery and all that, mm. so that they can bridge the gap. Stop can't even do no? surgery. Yeah, so mm. that they can bridge. That, that's what I'm saying. That some they will just bridge the gap. Kenya is doing that already. They just they, they train some of these people. They will be able to handle some of the things that doctors uh, do. But because for now, there's nothing we can mm. do. It's not simply about brain drain. People mm. think it's brain drain. I, I saw a comment that says, oh, with the way people are looking for doctors everywhere. No, we are not even producing enough. Hmm. That is the point. We are not hmm. producing enough. Hmm. Mayor Kibuelu, thank you so much. I still have some tickets with me. So <laughs> if you get with us on the, just, in touch with us on time, just, I think, eight in number now, yes. uh, yeah. seven. So get in touch with us on time. I'll give it to you free of charge. Thank you, Mayor Kibuelu. Thank, thank you, you for being part of this edition. And um, Bikio, thank you for being part of this edition. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. And also watch journalist hangouts on our platforms showing on the screen. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is journalist hangouts at tvcnews.tv. Amaya Dilu is welcome. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>